In this section, I'm going to talk about select microbial enzymatic tests. The catalase test, oxidase, amylase, protease, lipase, and urease. So all of these are enzymes. You can tell because they end in ASE. And these tests are important in uh, medical diagnosis of microorganisms. So to begin with the catalase test. So there's a little paragraph written here about the catalase test. So I'm going to explain uh, what you're seeing happen in this catalase test. So catalase tests for the presence of the enzyme catalase, which has the ability to degrade hydrogen peroxide into oxygen and water. In a little bit, we're going to learn about the process of cellular respiration. And if the microorganism goes through the process of cellular respiration, the very last step ends with oxygen coming in and acting as a terminal electron acceptor to those hydrogen um, electrons. So oxygen is going to come in, it's going to combine with the hydrogen protons and the electrons that tra uh, transported through that electron transport chain and we're going to end up producing water, H2O. But there is a chance that we could produce something other than water. If we produce H2O2, hydrogen peroxide, H2O2 is toxic. And for the longest time, microorganisms were unable to go through the process of cellular respiration because when they produced this water, they produced this hydrogen peroxide on accident, and that's toxic, and they ended up killing themselves. So as they did this respiration process, they were dying. So cells have evolved to produce this enzyme catalase, and catalase breaks down hydrogen peroxide. If the microorganism does cellular respiration, they need to be able to produce this catalase, or they'll kill themselves every time they try to make energy. So sometimes uh, you know, bacteria have the ability to produce this, sometimes they don't. If they don't, then they're not going to be able to go through aerobic respiration, they won't be able to survive in the presence of oxygen too well, and they won't be able to um, use oxygen as a terminal electron acceptor. So, what you do for this procedure is you're going to take some bacteria off of typically a plate, and you're going to smear it directly on the surface of a microscope slide. And then you add hydrogen peroxide directly to the surface. If you see bubbles, that means that catalase is breaking down the hydrogen peroxide into oxygen and water. So you see the oxygen bubbles and it's turning into water as well. So if it's catalase positive, that means that that catalase enzyme is there and any hydrogen peroxide that was produced by that microorganism is being broken down or any hydrogen peroxide that's added to that microorganism on the slide is being broken down by the catalase that's produced by that microorganism. So the bacteria is on the slide, you add the drops of hydrogen peroxide, bubbles is a positive result. If there are no bubbles, that's a negative result. This is used to distinguish staphylococcus type species from streptococcus type species in gram-positive cocci. So when we start talking about gram-positive cocci and distinguishing features between the two major groups of organisms, this test is going to be a key player there. One simple test can help um, take your results and put you in the right direction to diagnosing this patient. The oxidase test. The oxidase test is another important one. This oxidase test is important. Um, sometimes it's important to be used for the diagnosis of enteric pathogens. There are very few oxidase um, positives that are enteric pathogens. So if you get a positive result, it kind of narrows it down for you quite a bit. So the oxidase test tests for the presence of the enzyme cytochrome C oxidase which is part of that electron transport chain in cellular respiration. It allows us to determine whether the microorganism uses aerobic respiration as a mechanism of energy production. Cytochrome C oxidase is detected by the addition of this large compound, which changes uh, color from yellow to blue in the presence of cytochrome C oxidase. So this blue color change is a positive test result. Amylase. So the actual test is called the starch hydrolysis test, but it's testing for the presence of the enzyme amylase. 
If the microorganism produces amylase, amylase is an enzyme that can digest carbohydrates. So starch is a carbohydrate. We have starch embedded in the agar plate. And if the microorganism can eat starch, it produces that amylase. The amylase is going to eat a clear zone around the growth of bacteria. You can't directly see this clear zone. You actually have to add iodine to the surface of the plate. Iodine forms a tight complex with the starch, so it'll be black in color if there's starch present, and it'll be clear or see-through if there's no starch present. So here you can see it's pretty much black all the way through because that bacterium did not produce amylase and did not eat the starch. But this bacterium did produce amylase and did eat the starch. So uh, you can see the clearing around that bacterial growth. Protease is similar. So the test is called the casein hydrolysis test. It evaluates the microorganism's capability of producing proteases. Casein is a milk protein, so sometimes we call these milk agar plates. And um, we put that casein protein inside of the agar and then we look for clearing around the bacterial growth. If you see this clear line around that bacterium, then you know that it's positive for the presence of proteases. So that bacteria produces prote uh, proteases that can digest the casein protein in that milk agar. Lipase, so the lipid hydrolysis test evaluates the microorganism's capability of producing lipases. Fat is added to spirit blue agar plate. If the microorganism produces these, um, sorry, that should say lipases, then a clear zone will appear around the bacterial growth. In addition to it being clear, you might be able to see lipid droplets. And it might be blue in color. So this top one, Staphylococcus epidermidis, is positive, while E. coli is negative. And let me just correct this now so we don't forget. So this should say light bases. Urease. So the urea hydrolysis test evaluates the microorganism's capability of producing urease. If the microorganism does produce this enzyme while growing in urea agar or in urea broth, it degrades the urea to ammonia, which causing it causes an increase in pH, and that changes the color of the medium to a bright pink. Only bright pink is a positive result. So even though this one's kind of orangish in color, we would still consider that a negative result. Now, why do we care about any of these color changes or any of these results? Again, it all goes back to diagnostics. If we know that E. coli is the only one on earth that produces the enzyme urease, which is completely untrue, but just go with me for right now. Let's say we know that for a fact that E. coli is the only one, or E. coli is the only one that lives in the intestine that would cause those types of symptoms and um, that looks like that under the microscope. And let's say our patient comes in with something that looks like E. coli and it also produces that urease. Well, now when we compare our lab results, we can kind of say, hey, yeah, that's probably an E. coli infection. Catalase test. Let's say a patient comes in with a wicked wound infection, and let's say it's necrotizing fasciitis, so it's flat flesh-eating bacteria, and you need to get a really fast diagnosis. So you culture the wound, you grow it on a plate overnight, you've got some growth, and that's great. Now, what's the fastest way to figure out what it is. Well, if you throw it under a microscope and do a gram stain, it's going to come back as a gram positive cocci. And that gram positive cocci could be a staph related species or a strep related species. And you may not necessarily use the same antibiotic to treat those. So what's the best course of action? Well, if you do a simple catalase test within a matter of seconds, you could determine whether it's a staph related species or a strep related species. And you could be on the way to a faster diagnosis and a faster um, treatment plan for that patient so that it could stop that infection from spreading uh, at, at the fast rate that it spreads. So these tests, although it seems like another thing to know or another thing that you have to memorize for this course, they're all important for diagnostics. 
knowing why the color change happens, what enzyme is produced, and what that means as far as diagnosis is really important. So as long as you know the basics of these, um, these tests, you should do okay with those test questions.